In this video, we're going to see an example of writing a multi-file C program. The reason you may want to write a multi-file C program is if you have some code that you might want to share between different programs, the easiest way to do that is to create a module. When I say module, I'm referring to a C program that consists of a C source file and then a header file. The header file, the .h file, is going to contain what you can think of as the public parts of your module, and the private parts will be in the C file. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's, it's close enough for what we're going to be doing. So here's my original file. And so I have some macros that I've defined. I have a forward declaration. I have a function, and then I have some code that exercises these. Now this is a toy example. A better example that would be more real world would be if you look at the basic list example we have, where we have a header file and a C file for the basic list. We can copy that into any program and say, hey, here's some basic list code that you can use. You don't have to actually write any code yourself or add anything to your source code. But for this example, we're just doing some really simple things just so that you can see how the mechanics of writing a multi-file C program work. So I'm going to move this over here because I actually want to create a new file based off of this. So the first file I'm going to create is going to be called mystuff.h. So I'll open that file and you can see right now it's empty. Now anytime we have a header file, we want to make sure that you can't include multiple copies of that header file in the same source code. The reason is the way C works, whatever you put in a header file essentially gets copied into the source code of the file that's including it. So I want to add some statements at the top of this file. To ensure that this doesn't get included more than once. And if you don't understand how that works or why that is, just put this in your code and don't worry about it. The, the, the key is, is that you just need these statements to ensure that your code will work in multiple situations. So I'm going to say, if not defined, my stuff underscore h, then I'm going to define my stuff underscore h. And, and typically there's, there's different naming conventions. The one I use is the name of the file in all caps with the period replaced with an underscore. And then I'm going to have an end if to say, this is the end of this if statement. So if my stuff underscore h is not defined, I'm going to do what's in this block of code here. If it is defined, which it will be the second time this code is encountered, then this would just be ignored. So in my header file, I want to include macros and forward declarations for any public facing elements of my module. So I'm just going to copy those into the header file. And so here I have my macros and my forward declarations. So I'll save that and that should complete the header file. Now I want to create the corresponding C file for this module. It's going to be called mystuff.c. And mystuff.c is going to have the implementation of the function that I'm providing. So I'm going to copy this and I'll paste it. Now, I don't explicitly need to include mystuff.h here. I like to include this for two reasons. First off, it makes sure that all my forward declarations I need here are set up. So if I have functions that use each other, I don't have to worry about the order. They'll have a forward declaration from the H file. And then the other reason I do this is just to make sure that the forward declarations match the actual implementation of the C files. And that's actually all there is here. This is where the actual code goes. So let's now do our C file. This is now in our my stuff module, so I don't need that. This is in my stuff.h. So really, this is the only code I need. So I'll include standardio.h, and then I'll put my main function below there. So I'm going to run this. So I have some errors. Implicit declaration of function max, that's this right here. Num is undeclared, 
that's this, and implicit declaration of max3. So this particular error right here, whenever you see implicit declaration, that essentially means that there's no forward declaration for this function. You're using a function, but it doesn't know how it's defined. Typically, that'll work in a lot of cases because the default, I believe, is a integer return value with one integer parameter, or it just might assume that all the parameters are ints. That implicit declaration, though, is not usually what you want. So it's always good to make sure you have that declaration somewhere. And so I need to include the header file because if you'll remember, my header file has those things. So I'm going to include my stuff.h and when I compile now, notice it works. I have an undefined reference to max of three. So just to show you the real quick what that include does, if I use the dash E flag, that tells GCC just to run the preprocessor. And all of these pound include, pound defined, and so forth, those are all preprocessor directives. So you'll notice when I do include my stuff.h, you can see that it actually puts that code, that material from my stuff.h in my code. Now you don't see the defines because those are handled by the compiler, but you see that where I had max right here and num right here, you can see that those have been replaced in the original source code with what they're defined to be, what they were defined to be in the header file. If I didn't do this include statement and then I tried to run the preprocessor, you'll see that none of those replacements were made. And I get those errors when I try to actually compile it. I compile this and let's look at this error, undefined reference to max of three. So I have a forward declaration for max of three, but I don't actually have a definition. So what I need to do is include my stuff.c in the compile command. So this compiles both multifile.c and my stuff.c. So now I've compiled everything that includes code I need and then the linker is able to find everything it needs and I can run my code and it runs as I would expect. This is a real important concept to get. There are other examples in this module. There's another multi-file example and then the basic list example. It's an example of how to build a, an actual useful module with a C file and a header file. And again, remember, include the header file and we use quotes when it's a local file. I think I neglected to mention that earlier. That's why these are quotes. Whenever you see the uh, ankle brackets, that means that those are a system include. This would be a local include. And I could even put a path here if I wanted, uh, if it was in like my code, the my code directory, I could put that there. But this just, whenever you have just the, the plain quotes that says, look in the local directory where you're compiling from for that header file. And then this next thing to remember is always include the C file that goes along with the header file in your compile statement. Now in this class, our focus is not really on make files, but I do wanna show you those because they're a very nice way of not having to write a lot of these long, complicated compile statements. And for project two, which you'll be having seven different files there, you'll have three modules plus your, your main program. I've given you a, a make file. You don't need to edit it yourself. You don't need to worry about what any of this means, but this make file essentially gives directions to the system for what to do. So when I type make, I need to install it. And I just installed Ubuntu on it recently, so that's why that's not there. So now if I just type make, notice it runs these file these commands automatically and there's my output. So what's nice about make is once you have your make file written for your project, you don't have to remember to compile your C files every time. It already tells it to do that. There are other videos out there if you want to see what, you know, learn how to write a make file, but that's not really part of 240. If you're in 220, then yes, you should be looking at those and, and you'll see a reference to those. For 240, really all you need to know is once you're given a make file that works, you can just type make and that'll build your program for you. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to multi-file programs in C. Just as a review, our header file is just going to include forward declarations and macros typically. There are cases where you would have other things, but those are beyond the scope of what we're covering in this class. You always wanna add guards at the beginning of your header file to ensure that it doesn't get included multiple times. That can happen if you have multiple files that are including the same utility header file. 
So uh, this prevents trouble from there. It's always just a good habit just to add these as soon as you write your header file. Don't worry about them beyond that. If not defined, name of the file in caps. Then if it's not defined, then define it and don't forget the indef. Then the corresponding C file has the code that's the implementation of the four declarations you have. You can also have local stuff here if you want. If I defined a global variable or another function that I didn't have a forward declaration for, then I could use those inside this file, but they wouldn't necessarily be available in the other file, even if it includes my stuff.h. So you can have private, you can think of them as private members almost in your C code. And then once you're ready to actually use your module, you're going to include my stuff.h you're going to compile with mystuff.c, and that allows you to use the module you've created. And then if you want to use my stuff dot, if you want to use my stuff outside of this multi-file example, you can, you just copy the C and header file somewhere else and use those the same way we use them here. Okay. So that's a uh, multi-file programs in C. Again, look at the other videos. You may want to review this one because this is a really important concept to grasp.